Welcome to Watchwell Studio. Today I'm going to be reviewing and giving an overview of Blue Moon City by Rainer Kinesia. Uh, this followed his game in 2004 called Blue Moon. It was published in 2006 by Fantasy Flight Games and republished in 2018 by Cool Mini or Not. It's for two to four players and somebody's come up with a solo variant so you can play it as a solitaire and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to play. We've checked that, that's not just the numbers on the back of the box. So um, Board Game Geek members give it a complexity of 2.3 out of 5, an overall rating of 7. So for a game that's more than 15 years old, that isn't bad at all. Let's take a look at the game. The theme of the game is that the wars of succession in the game Blue Moon destroyed the city, and players are now trying to restore the city by organising work groups from the populace. Now, when a building is repaired, it gives bonuses in the form of crystals, and these can be offered in turn to the central obelisk. The player who makes a certain number of offerings first is deemed a worthy steward of Blue Moon City and will be the winner. Let's take a look at the components in the context of how the game plays, and we'll talk about the actual rules in more detail later on. The buildings of the city make up the game board, and these are modular tiles that show the rubble of the buildings on the front and the reconstructed building on the back. They have a contribution space with different numbers and colours, and the different completion and neighbourhood bonuses. Completion bonuses are awarded when a destroyed building is completed, and then that building can award its neighbourhood bonuses when adjacent buildings are restored. Players mark their position with these player miniatures as they move around the city, and they can summon the city's dragon guardians to witness their efforts. Building reconstruction is done by organising the populace of Blue Moon, which are represented by people cards, and these each have a colour, a numerical value, and also a special power in most cases. Uh, players mark their contributions with these simple plastic markers, and they earn crystals and maybe golden scales too, which are both represented by cardboard counters. Players can make offerings of the crystals they've earned to the central obelisk, as I mentioned, and that's the game's scoring track, which is represented by this, another cardboard item. Okay, let's move on to the actual rules. It's a turn-based game, and each turn has three distinct phases. Uh, the movement phase, the contribution phase, and the reset phase. Uh, in the movement phase, you move your marker around the board. The contribution phase, you can make contributions and offerings. The contributions uh, to reconstruction earn you crystals, uh, golden scales and extra cards. And then if you're making an offering, you can offer those crystals to the central obelisk, which will score you victory points. In the reset phase, you draw cards and optionally discard others to replace them. Let's go into some more detail on these phases. Moving is optional, uh, only orthogonal, and usually up to only two tiles. Other effects can be applied to increase the number of tiles you move, but you can only move once per turn, so the movement has to happen together. Uh, all of the interactions uh, in the game are orthogonal, so in future if I say movement I mean orthogonal movement, and if I say adjacent I mean orthogonally adjacent. Uh, contributions to reconstructing buildings are made by turning in sets of people cards for their numerical value. People cards also have abilities, but we'll talk about that later. So, the simplest contribution would be to turn in a set of people cards whose colour and numerical value matches a contribution space shown on the buildings, then placing one of your counters on that space. Your contribution can be greater than shown in the space, and you can make multiple contributions if you're able. You use the card's ability to help with contributions, but I'm going to talk about abilities in a moment. Uh, any dragon present on the tile when you make a contribution will award you a dragon scale as a token of their draconian approval, but only once per dragon. The scales eventually provide another source of crystals, and I'm going to talk about dragons and golden scales in a moment too. When a building's contribution spaces have all been filled, the reconstruction is complete and players score according to the tile's construction bonus markings. Now, every player who's contributed to the reconstruction gets the construction bonus once, and the player who's made the most contributions gets the majority bonus. In the event that contributions are tied between players, the one whose counter made the leftmost contribution gets the majority bonus. 
and you'll see that the leftmost is usually the largest value. Now additionally, if the completed building is adjacent to an already completed building, that's when the neighbourhood bonus fires and the majority player gets the neighbourhood bonus. You can make as many contributions as you're able in the phase, but each contribution is separate, so you can't use any remainders from one contribution to another. Uh, that's making a contribution. The other option in this phase is to make an offering. Uh, it's somewhat similar, so let's take a look at that. If we finish our movement on a ruined building, we make a contribution to its reconstruction. And in the same way, if we finish our movement on the crystal obelisk in the centre of the city, we can make an offering to the obelisk. We do that by turning in as many crystals as are marked on an offering space, which you'll see resemble the contribution spaces. And as you can also see, the cost of making offerings increases during the game. So this is how the game proceeds. Players are moving around the board, contributing to reconstruction. That earns them crystals. And then they're moving back to the central tile to make offerings of those crystals to the crystal obelisk. And the winner will be the one who makes a certain number of offerings first. The final turn phase is the reset phase, and this is where we get to fix our hand. You can discard up to two cards, and draw that many from the deck, plus draw two more. As I mentioned in the contribution section, any dragon present on the tile when you make your contribution will award you a golden scale, but only once per dragon. Scales are a secondary mechanism which provides an additional payout of crystals in a cyclic manner. Uh, the supply of golden dragon scales is part of the setup and it differs depending on the number of players. It's 7 for 2 players, 10 for 3 players and 12 for 4 players. If a player makes a contribution with a dragon present, they'll get scales from the supply, but the supply is limited as we've seen. So when the supply runs out, scoring for golden scales is triggered. At this point, the player with the most scales gets 6 crystals, the other players with at least 3 scales get 3 crystals, and if you have less than three crystals, you keep them. The other players return them to the supply. Let's talk about the special powers of the people cards. As we've mentioned, the cards have a numerical value that's used to make contributions, but they also have special powers too. Some powers are used instead of using its value towards a contribution, which the English rules call discarding, and some are used as part of the contribution. They're different for each of the different races, and here they are one by one. The powers, the red, black and blue cards, all move the dragons around the city, but they can't also be used for contribution. All the one cards move the dragons to any other tile, and the two cards move the dragons up to three tiles. The dragons are off the board when the game starts, so someone needs to play a one card to bring them into the game. Now follow me closely here. The blue cards move the blue dragon, the red cards move the green dragon, and the red dragon is moved by the black cards. The grey cards are similar to those cards, but you move your player piece rather than the dragons, and they likewise can't be used for contributions. Remember that generally you play cards in phases one and two, but you can only move once, so if you want to use these cards to move your player piece, you have to play them during your movement phase. Okay. The green, brown, white and yellow card powers work during the contribution phase. Some can be used as part of a contribution and some can't. The green cards are used uh, as any other colour as part of a contribution, but they're only one values. The one and two value brown cards can also be combined in pairs to provide a value of three in any other colour. The white cards powers allow you to change the colour of other cards the one will change up to four cards in another single colour. The two value cards can be played to change the colour of just one other card. The yellow card powers allow you to make multiple offerings to the obelisk with an additional cost. The one value card allows an extra offering for an additional one crystal, and the two value card allows an extra offering but for an additional two crystals. So again, most of the cards are being played only for their ability and can't also count towards a contribution, but the green and the brown cards can. Okay. The last rule is that the supply of player counters is limited. We only have 10 each. This means you can run out, and as the game progresses, 
and you use counters to mark crystal offerings and contributions to buildings, their use becomes more critical. It applies an increasing handicap to the leading player. It's quite clever. So that's all for an overview and the rules of Blue Moon City. We think it's a great game and we hope this was thorough enough to serve as a walkthrough for players trying to learn the game together and uh, otherwise interesting enough um, that you'll seek it out for yourself. If you want to chat about games, we have a Discord server and I'll put the uh, QR code up uh, at the end here. Thanks very much. Join us again in Watchful Studio.